All right, let's get down to it. I uh, was teaching you last week, and we were talking about the uh, authorization that God had given us because we have the same divine nature. We have the same divine nature. And so I, I want to talk to you a little bit more about that. Let me take you through that. I know I didn't give it to you in the back, but you guys should have it. I just want to make sure that everybody understands where we're coming from. Go real quickly to Second uh, Peter 1, real quick, just real quickly. I want to make sure my guests understand. I don't want nobody to be lost. Like, he's saying that we could do the same thing God can do. That's exactly what he's saying. That's exactly what he's saying. Second Peter, real quickly. Second Peter, one, two through four. I'll read while you're turning. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things. Somebody say, I got all things. Now, notice we only got all things through his divine power. Watch this. That pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers or participators of the what divine what nature having escaped the corruption that is in the what world through lust. So when you participate with God, you're able to receive his divine nature, and the Bible says you're able to escape the corruption that's in the world. You say, what's the corruption? When Adam sinned in the garden, God said, from here on out, you're going to struggle. You're going to sweat from your brow. You're going to have to work for everything. You're going to have to work for everything. But before that, he didn't have to work for what? Nothing. He participated in everything God did. He was God's son. Matter of fact, I'll take you through it, not today, but maybe next week or the week after. I'll be able to show you a scripture, but the Bible says, whatever Adam called it, that's what it was. Because he had what? God's divine nature. He wasn't sweating. Oh, girl, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to operate and participate in my divine nature. I know it sounds crazy because why? We've been indoctrinated by the world system for so long. In other words, I was, I was in bondage longer than I've been freed. See, that was the reason why the children of Israel could not get out of their way. Because they could not let the old Pharaoh system go. And since they couldn't let go, they couldn't go in what God had. God had promised them the promised land. So watch this. He had given them great promises, just like we just read. But they couldn't, they didn't participate, which allowed them not to escape that corrupt system. Are you with me? In other words, watch this. When I, tell, when I, when I might mention, um, let's say, uh, you know what? I might say to somebody, you should be driving a $100,000 car. The first thing they would think is, and I'll be honest, I can't afford that. That's a corrupt world. Because why? You think about labor. He told Adam, since you, since you see it, now you're going to have to labor. You're going to have to work for everything. But what if he could speak it and call it? That was years ago when I grew up. I'm a 70s baby. When I grew up years ago, that was a little toy that my mom had bought me, and it was called a speak and say. And pull it. Cow. Moo. I, I would see it, and I could say it. I could see it, and I could say it. So when somebody say, I, I can't afford that, it's because they can't see it. And since they can't see it, they can't say it. You're not hearing me. See, I say a whole lot, so I know I offend a lot of people on what I'm going to be and what I'm going to do and what I this, that, and the other. Look at him. See, that's because you just can't see it. But I will not apologize for saying it. You understand what I'm saying? So, so, so that, that's where we're going with this thing here. So I want to talk about real quickly, and I want you to look at this title that we'll be on for two weeks because I won't finish it up today, so I want to give you a heads up for all my guests today. I won't finish it up, so that means you've got to come back next week and get the other half. But today's title, watch this. Look at today's title. It's called Authorization. Still authorization, but the author, I say. I say it into existence. I say it. 
I learned years ago, you should call it like you see it. Call it like you see it. Call it like you see it. I was reading uh, this past weekend uh, a book that was sitting on my shelf for a couple years. I said, let me read it back again. It was called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And he was talking about the two different mindsets of somebody being broke and somebody being poor. I'm going to say this real quick and then move on. He says, when it comes to value and when it comes to money, broke folks trying to figure out how to get it. Poor folks saying, I can't get it. I'm going to say it again. I used to think being broke was bad. It's not. Broke is temporary. Poor is permanent. I'm going to move on. See, some of you right now, you just broke, but you ain't poor. Broke is temporary. Why? I've been broke. You see what I'm saying? Broke is temporary, but poor is permanent. You got to get this. It's all right to be broke. Girl, let's go here. Girl, I ain't got no money. I'm what? Broke. That's temporary. But poor is, they don't need me going. Right. See, that's different. You're denying everything that you could have access to, but you can't see yourself with it. Broke can see themselves with it, just can't see themselves with it now. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, that was good right there. That was good. Hey, I, I felt bad. I thought I was broke. I'm all right being broke. I'm glad I ain't poor. <laughs> That's for somebody. That's for somebody. Take it on to your family today. Stop being poor. It's all right to be broke. Where you get that from? In church. <laughs> Let's get down to it. First Corinthians 2. 10. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2, 16. My apologies. 1 Corinthians 2. Authorization. Authorization. We talked about that last week when the centurion soldier says, I too am a man of authority. When I tell a man go, he what? He goes. When I tell a man come, what? He comes. When I tell a man to do what? He does. He said, I understand authorization. And since I had divine nature, I understand that again, that the Bible says that Christ is seated on the right hand of the Father. I know this to be true. Not only that, but the Bible says that we were seated in Christ in where? Heavenly places. So if the Father's here and Christ here, guess where I'm at? I'm right there. Now only royalty, only a king or a queen can declare what? Anything. But here's what you got to remember. You're where? On the throne. See, I wish somebody would have told me when I was, in the, when I was back in that religion and Baptist, one of them little Baptist churches, not speaking any bad about any denomination, but I was back in a little Baptist church. They didn't tell me that I, too, was on the throne. I was on the throne, so therefore, whatever I speak, it shall be. Oh, you think you're going to do it? No, I'm not going to do it. He going to do it. But I'm going to participate with him. The Bible says that we are co-laborers. We are co-workers. That means participation. Somebody say participate. Yeah, you can't spectate. God going to do it. No, you're going to have to do it, but he's going to do it through you. Are you with me? Look at 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, for, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of who? Christ. We have the mind of who? Christ. That means we're going to model him. Watch how he walk, we're going to walk. Watch how he talk, and what? We talk. You got to get this now. The scripture says, he who walk among wise counsel, he too shall be what? The only reason he wise, because he walking around what? Wise. Didn't say he had a degree. He didn't have any of that. But he understand how this works. It's called modeling. Another terminology called shadowing. They move, you move. Here's where it comes. Similar actions you can write this down, will always produce similar results. If I lost 40 pounds, and you say, how'd you lose that 40 pounds? I did this, this, this. Okay, and if you do this, this, and this for the same time I did it, you're going to lose some weight. Maybe not exactly 40 pounds, but you're going to lose some. You're going to get some results for doing the same thing I did. So we're trying to get the mind of Christ so we can get the same results he did. Are you with me? So we have the mind of Christ. Somebody say we have the mind of Christ. Now watch this. Philippians 2, 5 through 6. This is a quick review so I can get to this new stuff. Philippians 2, 5 through 6. Paul says what? Let this what? Mind be where? In you, which was also where? 
in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be what? Equal with God. Now, most churches, that's blasphemy. What? That pastor up there talking about we equal with God. We ain't God. Well, yes and no. The Father is God. Jesus Christ is the Son of, the Son of, the Son of, which makes him God, right? Now, he's not God. It's no more than if I bring uh, um, my daughter. Stand up here, Alexis. This is, this is my daughter, my biological daughter. Stand up here, Alexis. This is me. Though this ain't me, this is me. Does that make sense? If it makes sense, raise your hand. But it ain't me. But she come from me. So if it come from me, me is in her. Me made her. So this is me. Though it ain't me. You get me? Okay, good. Thank you, Les. All right. So, so, the, so the son's in the father. That's why he's called the son of God. But he's also called the son of man. Because he is the in-between God and man. That's why he's, he's an intercessor. He's a mediator. Are you with me? So, when he says he, he, he's equal with God, he's he not robbing God or nothing. That's disrespectful. That's what the, the, the high priest and the Sadducees say. That's disrespectful. You calling yourself God. No, I'm not calling myself God. I am. Do you know before Abraham was who? I am. He's talking about his father. But then he comes back and says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. So he's not taking anything away from God. Why? Because he's saying, I'm not going to say anything that my father didn't say. Long as he's saying what he's saying, he is operating like him. Are you with me? So, again, if he's saying what he's saying, then he's operating like him. And if we in him and we saying what he's saying, and therefore he's saying what he's saying, then we saying what he's saying. Then we operating like God. Are you with me? Did he not say in Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in our who? Image. In the image of who? God. Look at your neighbor and say, are you all right? Because some of y'all are going, what the? <laughs> I'm serious. I can see some of y'all getting sick, nauseated right here right now. Because you ready for an old religion. And God, and God said, no, it ain't. I can do this. I can do this. No, I can do this. Oh, I'm going to do this. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to participate in this. I'm going to participate in this. Watch this. So, so, so it's, not, it's not anything. You're not robbing anything. You're not saying you this, that, and the other. But you are, again, operating as God. That's the reason God gave man dominion over all the what? Earth. So he can speak it. So he can speak it. So man is going to be operating as God on earth. Though God is in heaven, God is actually operating on earth. Are you with me? Okay, good, good, good. Romans 8, 5 through 8. Let's move forward. Romans 8, 5 through 8. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Watch this. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. But it is not subject to the law of God. So he's speaking and declaring it. That's a law. That's a law. I've been saying for many years in this church, closed mouths don't get fed. you got to participate. So he says here that a corner mind, oh, I'm not, that's stupid. I'm not doing that. See, then you ain't going to get what God got. For indeed can be. Verse 8 says, so then those who are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. Those who are in the flesh cannot what? Those in the flesh cannot what? Please God. Because those who cannot please God are not in what? Faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to what? Please God. So those who are in the flesh is not in what? Faith. I don't know, girl, I don't know how I'm going to do that. See, you ain't in faith. And look what you're saying. Look what you're saying. Here's the thing about it. It's not your job to figure out how it's going to happen. Your job is to believe it's going to happen. All of us sitting up in here right now, we still don't know how this whole birth pregnancy thing works. We have no clue how it works. How can a two drops of, bl of blood 
create these bones and skin and brain. And we don't know how this stuff works. Look at your neighbor and say, leave that to God. Leave that to, leave that to God. And you don't try to figure it out. We don't know how this stuff works. We don't know how you can take the same dirt that's on the bottom of your shoe, take it, put it in a, put it in a bowl, put it in a, a pot, and put a seed in it, and somehow it grows. Look at your neighbor and say, leave that to God. We don't know how we can pull out a cell phone and call somebody in California, call somebody in China, call somebody in Africa, all over the world. We don't know how it works. And you still pick up that phone. You don't even think about it. When it don't work, you mad. What's wrong with my phone? My phone not working. Because you know it's supposed to be dialing somewhere you can't see. Y'all ain't hear me. You ain't hear me. Look at the neighbor and say, he went there. He went there. Yeah, you can't see it, but you believe it's supposed to be working. Well, why come your faith don't work the same way? Are you with me? Look at, uh, uh, stay in Romans uh, 8, and let's go to uh, verse 14 to 17. This is going to really bless you. Though, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? See, I'm going to say it again. For those who are led by the Spirit of God is what? Well, is that not who Jesus is? Jesus is what? The Son of God. So when we're led by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost, we're operating as a what? Son of God. Because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Because God is what? Holy. So when I'm led by the Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, lead and guide me. Should I sign these papers? Should I go for this job? Should I buy this car? Whatever he lead me to do, then I'm operating as the Son. And once I operate the Son, that makes the Father responsible for it. Who told you to do that? God told me to do that. But then I ain't worrying about it then. When people say, God told me, that's all different. The problem is people run around right here saying God said a whole lot of things. I'm going to move on from that. That got quiet. That got quiet. For you did not receive the spirit of what? Bondage again to what? Fear. Because we know that God did not give us a spirit of fear. But of what? Power, love, and a what? Sound mind. God don't do confusion. You know, I don't know what to do. You ain't been led by the spirit yet. So when you do, you'll give a peace that's a past. It'll just make clear. You know, you know what I think? You know what I'm going to do? And it's just clear as day. You don't care what it looks like. You don't care what everybody else is saying. I'm going to do this. Matter of fact, I'm going to do this. I feel like I got to do this. If I don't do nothing else, I got to do this. That's why you're being led by the Spirit. So watch this. But you not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness of our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with him. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. If we suffer with him, you see what I'm saying? All right, let's continue. Galatians 4, 6 through 7. Galatians 4, 6 through 7. Now, I'm talking about the spirit here. I want, you, I want to get this thing. We're talking about the spirit. Those being led by the spirit is the sons of God. Galatians 4 and 6 says, and because you are sons of God, God has sent forth the what? Spirit of his son into your heart. So the same spirit that was on Christ is now in your heart. The same spirit. Somebody say the same spirit. Now keep in mind, Jesus had already testified. See, the stuff that I do, he said, I ain't doing it. My father's doing it. I'm not doing nothing. I'm just being obedient and being led by the spirit. You with me? All right. So, Give us the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a what? Son. So you're no longer a slave to the world. Who I need to get another job. This is not working out. Now, what's not working out? You ain't participating with God. You got you know, you to participate. Where's your faith at? You don't need two $10 jobs. You need $120. <laughs> I'm just being real. You're working too hard. We wouldn't call to work like this. Sweat like this. That's the world system. That's the worst thing. A slave, only thing a slave think about is stop working. A son never stops working because he ain't working. He participating. Let's be honest. You don't never mind helping somebody. You need me to do anything? Let me know. But if it's your job day in, day out, you hate it. Am I right about it? So, so, so it's because you're operating as the slave. The slave, all he thinks about is Friday. A son thinks about all day Monday. Well, in essence, Sunday, because Sunday's the first day of the week. He can't wait to get back. 
The slave can't wait to get away. And I'll say to anybody who got a job, you want to leave that job and find your purpose. The day you find your purpose is the day you actually retire. Because you ain't going to work. Are you with me? You're not going to work. You're operating in purpose now. So you never, like me, for instance, I'll never retire. I'll just die. Because I'm not tired of working. Because I ain't working. I'm in my purpose. You don't think a fish is working in water. He's just doing what he does. You don't think a, a bird work in the air. He just does what he does. He's because he's in his element. He's in his purpose. Find your purpose. I'll teach that in a, maybe in a couple months. You must find yourself, then lose yourself. You got to find yourself. Then once you find yourself, then you lose yourself in the very thing you're doing. You love it. Whatever you're doing now, you don't like it. Look at your neighbor and say, that ain't it. <laughs> that ain't it. I'm t- every, every Monday morning, Sunday night, to remind you, this ain't it. I'm tired of going over there fool with them raggedy folk. This ain't it. And we're going to praise the Holy Spirit. I'll be teaching a couple months how to find your purpose. All right. Where we at? All right. So, yeah. So, you're no longer a slave but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So, whatever he got, he got it from him. And whatever we got, we got it from him who got it from him. So, therefore, we got what he got. And he got what? Everything. So, the scripture is true. Then he's given us what? All things. Are you with me? Look at your neighbor and say, I got it all. That's a, that's a doggone sad, crying shame to have it all and to not have it at all. That's sad. To find that one day you're sick or one day you're dying and find out you had it all and you walked around life broke all day. Oh, that's so sad. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to get mine. <laughs> get, get mine before I get up out of this joker. John 16. John 16, 12 through 15. We're talking about authorization. I say it. He's giving me the power to say it. I'm not, doing, I'm not being disrespectful. I still have many things to what? Say to you. But you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the who? The spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not what? Speak. Speak on his own what? authority he will not the holy ghost will not speak on his own authority but whatever he what hears he would what right so he will the holy spirit will only speak what the son says because the son's only gonna say what the father says so no one speak out of turn that's why they're all operating as god god the father god the son and god who the holy spirit look at they would say same thing same thing same thing same, same thing same thing same thing. But, if I, but, if, but, but again, the Holy Spirit who's on earth will not speak anything on his own but tell me what he hears. Then therefore, when I say what he says, that I'm operating as God. Don't throw up yet. I know I'm like, woo, I ain't had breakfast this morning. That's, that's a lot. Right. We talked about it last week, that if I tell Mr. Javon something, and tell her to tell you, and I leave, I don't have to be here. I gave her authorization. She stand up, good morning, church. Dr. Ellis said this morning that we're going to do this, this. I said, everybody get up and participate. Let's go ahead and do it. Somebody go, well, I'm not doing it. I said, why not? I just told you Dr. Ellis told me to tell you this here. Anything outside of that, now you're not being obedient to Dr. Ellis. So when Dr. Ellis get here, he's going to ask you why you didn't do what I told you to do because he gave me Authorization. So I'm authorized to say this to you. And that's what's going on here. You're giving authorization to say it. Now, whether you say it or not, that's on you. So he says here, he will tell you things to what? Come. He will glorify. The reason he's able to tell you things to come, because why? Things happen in the spiritual before the natural. It already exists in the spiritual. You just can't see it. All right. So he said here at the end of the day that he would tell you things to come. He will glorify me for he will not take of what is mine. He for he will take of what is mine and what declare it to you. Declare another word for declare is a declaration. Declare decree. Job says again, the things that I declared and decreed, it was established. 
In other words, it ain't getting changed. That's what I said. That's what it is. That's what I said. That's what it is. So he's going to declare to you just what it is. All things that the Father has are who? Mine. Jesus talking. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take up what is mine and declare it to who? So look at the neighbor say, they ain't nothing but a transfer. They ain't nothing but a transfer. They ain't nothing but a transfer. That's all it is. This was the first cash app right here. <laughs> the first cash app. Transfer money. Transfer money is all you got to have. That's what he's doing right here. This is nothing but a spiritual transfer right here. John 14. John 14. 7 through 14. I got, it's a little long, but we're going we're gonna to put a pin in it right here. It's a little long, but I, I got to get you to understand what's going on here. Notice, Jesus didn't say he was going to do nothing. He said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. He's going to guide you. And here's what guiding me. He's also called your advisor. He's called your advocate. An advocate is somebody you need in court. Now, you only, you only need on two things you need in court. You're going to need a lawyer and you're going to need some evidence. You're not hearing, man. You're going to need a lawyer and you're going to need some type of evidence. And just by chance, it get real tough. Somebody going to have to take the stand. You're not hearing, man. See, when life get tough and, and your faith getting tested, look at your neighbor and say, you got to take a stand. You, you got to take a stand. You got to take a stand. I don't care what it look like or what it seems like. You got to take a stand. And I tell you, when it really get good, when the evidence like it ain't happening and, 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 and the court trial like it ain't going your way, fool around and bring up two or three witnesses. <laughs> See, that's what church is about. Most folks don't quite get it. This is it. This is the courtroom setting right here. That's why the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of ourselves. You ain't got nothing but what? Witnesses. Doing what? Testifying. Now, we might want different stuff. Same God. Same Lord. Same Spirit. Are you with me? So that's why we are today. You got to make sure that we are here around witnesses. And that's why don't keep your mouth closed. When I get something new, I can't, get to, I can't wait to get to church. I'd rather get around the church and tell my church folks family first before I tell my own blood, biological family. Mm. See, 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 see. When they go, mm, I know they don't want nothing. The only reason I'm showing you, fool, I'm showing you evidence. I'm trying to be a witness to make sure you get strengthened and still trust the same God I trust. So I can't wait to say, come look at this. Come get this. Come do this here. God, look at God bless with this new job. Because somebody is just an earshot away saying, I've been waiting on mine right now. I need to hear that. Ooh, child, how long you been waiting? <laughs> this is what he had in mind. Not for nobody to be hating and jealous and all that. No, let that be the lust of the world. Look at the neighbor and say, there's plenty, there's plenty, there's plenty. Yeah. See, the world get jealous. The, the world think about what? Lack. We got what? Abundance on the brain. We got increase on the brain. We got more than enough on the brain. We got overflow on the brain. Same God bless you. Going to bless me. Same God bless me. Gonna bless you. That's a witness right there. Hmm. All right. So where we at? All right. So Jesus says here, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, somebody say from now on. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me? The words, look where he, this way it gets good. The words, the words, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does what? The work. So raise the ladder from the dead. Jesus said, I ain't do that. He did that. Huh? Give him the blind sight. He said, I ain't do that. He did that. Turn the water to wine. He said, I ain't do that. He did that. 
Speak your David say, but he and me too, though. He and me too, though. Now, here's what you got to get. Here's what you got to get. Here's what you got to get in the name of Jesus. I'm going to go back over because some of you missed it. I'm going to go ahead and make a U-turn and pick y'all up. Look what he says here. Watch it being real. Verse 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? So we know Moses asked God, what's his name? And God said his name is what? There's not a morning don't go by the night before I close my eyes. I don't say I am. I am blessed. I am healed. I am well. I am proper. I am rich. I say I'm a mega church pastor. I'm a worldwide television evangelist. That's who I am. Why? Because I am is what? In the Father. See, he participating. He ain't spectating. He participating. So I am in the Father. Watch this now. Watch this here. And the Father, he said as well, in me. The words that I what? Speak. Sound like me. He doing what? Participate. <laughs> Look at David say he really participating. Yeah, he participating. He following the instructions. And we should have the same mind as who? Christ. Whatever he do, we do. I'm being real. This is the secret. And people missed it. It was so simple. People were like, that can't be it. That's exactly what it was. Because when we go back to Genesis, I'll show you the first thing God did. God said, let it be light. What happened? Look at David say, he sure right. He sure. Didn't say God start molding me. He didn't do none of that. He had authorization. Authorization. He said it. He said it. What are you saying? Because that shows what's going to manifest. So the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. The Father who dwells in me does the work. Continue. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me. For the sake of the works themselves. In other words, you see anybody do the stuff I do? Nope. All right, at least believe that. So something got to be going on with what he's saying. If you, if you don't believe what I'm saying, at least believe what you're saying. Okay. He, what he's doing is he's administering evidence. Here's what I'm saying. When I told you I'm going to get that car, did I get it? When I told you I'm going to get that house, did I get it? When I told you I'm going to start that business, did I get it? When I told you I'm going to go back to school to get my degree, did I get it? So even you, believe, you don't believe what I'm saying. Look at the evidence, man. So don't let you ought, you ought to go, you know what? Everything that man say, he be getting it. Everything that woman say, she be getting it. That's what I'm saying. That's what he's saying. If you don't believe what I'm saying, look at what's showing up. Are you with me? And we won't go there today, but we know. And John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word what? It is God. The word is God. So the word you speak, if you operating by authorization, the word you speak is God. Can anything stop God? Look at your neighbor and say, heck no, heck no, heck no. Can nothing stop God? Nothing can stop God. I know it's hard for some of you believe right now. Some of y'all getting sick. And you say, well, I need to go to lunch. I need to eat because I'm getting wheezy right now. Look at your neighbor and say, it's in the Bible. You see it clear as day. I know it's hard. You've been going to church all your little life, and you're struggling right now. You're 30-something, you're 40-something, you're 50-something, you're 60-something. No. Hold on. So he's saying, that's exactly what he's saying. That's what he said. He ain't saying nothing. He ain't saying. He ain't saying nothing. He ain't saying. Look at the neighbor. Say, you better get to saying. You better get to saying. I'm being real. Some of y'all didn't say nothing. See, that's why ain't nothing going to happen for you, because you ain't saying nothing. I'm going to keep saying it. Now watch this. When, it, when we read earlier, it says we must suffer with him and then we'll reign with him. We must suffer with him. Suffer means suffer persecution. Some of people talking about you. She's been talking about the car for a long. She's still walking. That's all right. She's still going to keep saying. Sooner or later, she's going to shut your mouth up like a lion in Daniel's den. She's going to shut your mouth up. You're going to keep your mouth off of me. They've been saying they're going to get a little house. They're still in the apartment. That's all right. Are they still saying it? they still saying it, though. You better watch out. You better watch out. Them people are crazy. You know, there's a thin line between crazy and faith. You got to be still crazy to speak in faith. You got to be crazy, child. Or at least be in faith that folks going to think you crazy. 
Look at your neighbor and say, it's still coming. It's still gets. Abraham spoke. Abraham spoke. Abraham spoke for 25 years he spoke. His name was Abram, meaning the father of. Abraham. Ham means the many of. So he was a, he was a father of many, but he had none. You're not hearing me. What's your name? Abraham. Where you kidding? Well, I ain't got none yet. <laughs> See, we operate in a state called yet. <laughs> or not now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I got it. He crazy. He old man talking about he got kids. He ain't got no kids. Isaac showed up. The promise showed up. He kept what? Sin. Every now and again, he get a little something. Oh, God said, come on out here. Look up here. Look at them star. He had to show him so he could still keep saying that God showed him what? Evidence. Every now and again, he get a little, he get a little weak. God said, Let me, come on out to the beach shore. Look at all this sand. Can you count all this? No, sir. Say, that's how many kids you're going to have. Why? To make sure he didn't stop what? Saying. I'm telling you, this, this is what it is. This is how the whole universe was created. Watch this. So, he said, believe in me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works of themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, you got to get this, I'm going to slow roll you. He, watch this, who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do, come on now, y'all can say it, the works that I do, he going to do what? But check this out, he ain't doing it no way. He's not doing it no way. He admitted he ain't doing it. He doing it. But if he thinks like, if we thinks like him, then whatever he doing, we doing because he doing it all. Look at the neighbor and say, I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. He just told you, first of all, I ain't doing it. He doing it all. But I'm in him. So if I come in you, then therefore you got him. So whatever I'm doing, you're going to be doing. But you got to be doing, watch this, what I'm doing. <laughs> Because all I'm doing is what? Speaking it. That's all I'm doing. You ain't seeing me karate chop nobody, whoop nobody. I'm just speaking it. And I'm standing flat-footed and bold. And I don't care what nobody say and nobody think. Because why? I believe he going to do it. Are you with me? Let the church say amen. So he says these works uh, that I do, he will do also. And watch this. And greater... We didn't even got to the regular works yet. He said, greater works than these he will do. Now, that greater works means this. You say, well, how can I do more than what he did? He raised people from the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He took two pieces of fish and five loaves and fed 5,000 men plus women. How can I do more? No, we can do more. He the head, but we the body. That's what he was saying. He said, that's more of y'all than it is of me. So if you can do what I can do and he can do what I can do, then just y'all two together and done more than I can do. Because he's doing it all anyway. Greater is he that is in. See, you talking about him. He doing it. How am I going to buy that house? Don't worry. He going to do it. I don't care if I get, look up and get a check in the mail out of nowhere. Found some, somebody didn't follow the plot that Big Mom left for me. Y'all not hearing me? I don't care how he do it. Here's the problem. We get so caught up in how is that going to happen? Done. That puts you where? Out of faith. It's my job to figure out how. I mean, be, be, let me be honest. Do you really care how he do it? <laughs> I mean, you got to admit, taking him through the Red Sea was a stretch. Here's my point. They got out. <laughs> I don't care how he do it. Turn them water in the wine, take them same six water pots. I don't care if he go to H-E-B, Food Town, Kroger's, or Randall's. I don't care how he do it. I don't care if he get a pot from everybody in my neighborhood. As long as I get the wine, I'm good. Think about it. Do you really care? And the truth of the matter is, if you really think about it, for those who really have experienced God and seen God never before, he never do it the way you think he going to do it. That's what makes him God. That's what makes him. That's why he tell you in Isaiah, you say, my ways are not your ways. So, 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 in other words, leave it alone. Look at the neighbor and say, stay out of God's business. Stay out of, stay out of grown folk's business. Stay out of grown folk's business. Don't worry about how you're going to do it. I just know he's going to do it. That's why we must come to the kingdom. He said, you cannot come to the kingdom unless you come as a child. You think a child actually care? 
I want PlayStation. I want a bike. I want this. You say to yourself, boy, I only make $10 an hour. I can't buy all that stuff. But what? They don't care. They say, I'm telling you, I'm what? Speaking it. I'm saying it. I better see something up on that tree. And I don't care. What's it? Let me read. I don't care who you are. If that baby keeps saying that thing over and over and over and over, oh, you gonna borrow? You gonna borrow money from Madea? You gonna borrow money from Uncle Tom? You gonna borrow some money from somewhere? Cause you say I can't let this baby down. And don't let them walk around the house and go around the family saying my my mama gonna buy me this, my daddy gonna buy me. You say, oh Lord, now they put me in a bad buy. God said, I'm going to bless you for my name's sake. You didn't tell everybody I'm going to do this. Well, yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Keep your mouth closed. Don't be telling everybody I'm going to do that. Because we don't have one. He said, I thought you said your daddy was going to buy you a bag. Did you say your mama's going to see what I'm saying? Yeah, you tell you, a kid come back and tell you, I told everybody you're going to do it. What you going to do? <laughs> I know you're laughing right now, but I know you're getting it. So why come we don't operate the same way and tell people what our father's going to do? Huh? You ain't going to get that. Oh, I'm going to get it. The Bible says he uphold his name above his word. You're not hearing me. Those are my, my Bible thumpers. You know that's what it means. He uphold his name above his word. Why? Because without his word, his name don't mean nothing. So now I done told everybody about him. Oh, he got to come through. Look at his neighbor and say, he got to do it. He got to do it. So watch this here. I'm, I'm going to be done. Most of the truth I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he would do also, and greater works than these that he would do. Because I go to my father, and whatever, here we go, you ask, sound like you saying something again, sound like you speaking something again, and what? My name, that what? I will do. That the Father may be what? Glorified, well, in the Son. If you ask, I thought he just said it a minute ago. Now, if somebody tell you this twice, they ain't really trying to get it to you. He just said it. I was telling my wife the other day, I was telling her something twice, I heard you the first time. See, I'm just making sure you heard me. You know how it is, you get, you get an irritated when somebody tells you, you just told me that. Well, that means they really don't want you to miss this point of everything I said. Don't forget this. Tell me he said. He said a whole lot, but he emphasized in this point. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Boy, that's some confidence he's instilling in everybody now. I'll do it. I'll do it. Now, I need to know, will you do it? Can you endure the laughing? Can you endure the finger pointing? Can you endure? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Look at his neighbor and say, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. They got an uh-huh, and when I finally get it, I'm going to say, uh-huh.